Hello students, welcome again to my video. We are now at topic 2, pavement materials, under the subject highway and traffic engineering. So for chapter 2, this topic will be focusing on highway construction, pavement material properties and also the testings. So let me introduce you a little bit to pavement materials and testing. As an introduction, road surface or pavement is the durable surface material which is laid down on an area intended to sustain vehicular or to support vehicular or foot traffic, such as road or walkway. In the past, cobblestones and granite sets were extensively used. These surfaces has mostly been replaced by asphalt, also known as bitumen or also concrete. Traffic subjects pavement to wear and damage. The amount of wear depends on the weight and number of vehicles using the pavement over a given period of time. Road engineers estimate the pavement damage from the axle loads of the various vehicles expected to use the pavement over its designed life, usually 20 years. As a general principle, the heavier and more numerous the vehicles using the roads, the thicker the pavement needed to support them. So now let us see what are the materials or common materials used in highway construction. The first we have the aggregates, NX, um, which consists of natural and artificial aggregates. And next we have fillers, which usually consist of mineral fillers. And next is binder material, which is cement for rigid pavements and bit bitumen and tar for flexible pavement and lastly for reinforcement we have steel and fiber which are um, the commonly used reinforcement in highway construction now let us look at the first material the main material of a flexible pavement or a rigid pavement which is aggregates or we normally call it as crusher run so aggregates are the coarse particulate material used in construction, which include sand, gravel, crushed stone, slag, recycled concrete and geosynthetic aggregates. So aggregates are a component of composite materials such as concrete and asphalt concrete. Aggregate serves as reinforcement to add strength to the overall composite material. So, as for naturally occurring aggregates, it is generally extracted from larger rock formation through an open excavation known as quarries. Usually, the rock is blasted or dug from the quarry, then reduced in size using, reduced in size using a series of screens and crushers. For example, crushed rocks, gravel and sand. So, this is an image of naturally occurring aggregates. So as for artificial aggregates, which are man-made aggregates, usually made of the mixture of lye ash, binders, admixtures, and also water. It consists of blast furnace slag, which is a co-product of the iron and steel making process, which undergoes conditioning, screening, crushing, and washing. So this is an image of artificial aggregates. So what are the important properties of aggregates? First of all, the first important properties of aggregates is strength. So aggregates must withstand crushing and impact during construction and also from traffic load. The next property is durability. So aggregates must be resistant to disintegration under weathering. The next one is shape and surface texture which helps in interlocking, which will increase the resistance to slidey and will affect the strength. Next is affinity, which uh, means that aggregates must or should be able to be properly coated by binder. Next is the relative density and absorption. So aggregate must have appropriate stripping, drying time, mix design. And then 
the important properties of aggregate is hardness where aggregates are polished under traffic and must be skid resistance and lastly is the gradation so aggregates must be of quality and also appropriate and suitable pavement strength so why don't you try to research other important properties of aggregates before we proceed with our lecture So let's talk about the gradation, gradation of aggregate. Grading refers to the determination of the particle size distribution for aggregates. The grading limits and maximum aggregate size are specified because these properties affect the amount of aggregate used, as well as cement and water requirements, the workability, pumpability, and also the durability of concrete. In hot mix asphalt, Gradation helps determine almost every important property, which includes the stiffness, stability, durability, permeability, workability, fatigue resistance, frictional resistance, and also most, most moisture susceptibility. So it might be reasonable to believe that the best gradation is one that produces the maximum density. This would involve a particle arrangement where smaller particles are packed between the larger particles, which reduces the void space between particles. This creates more particle-to-particle -particle contact, in which HMA would increase stability and reduce water infiltration. So this is a typical aggregate gradation and permeabilities. This is the semi log graph used for aggregate gradation and this is an example of graphs of cumulative percent passing versus the logarithmic sieve size you will learn more about this in the laboratory so this is the summary of the gradation terminology we have dense or well graded gap graded open graded uniformly graded fine gradation and coarse gradation Now let's talk about fillers. So mineral filler consists of very fine inert material matter that is added to the hot mix asphalt to improve the density and strength of the mixture. Mineral fillers will be consisting of finely divided mineral matter such as rock dust, slag dust, hydrated lime, hydraulic cement, fly ash, loess, or other suitable mineral matter. The portion of the mineral filler that is finer than the thickness of the asphalt film and the asphalt cement binder from a mortar or mastic that contributes to improved stiffening of the mix. Mineral fillers make up less than 6% of the hot mix asphalt concrete by mass and generally is less than about 3%. So this is a picture of sieved aggregates also uh, known as fine minerals, used as pavement fillers. The filler particles larger than the thickness of the asphalt behave as a mineral aggregate and contribute to the contact points between individual aggregate particles. So the gradation, shape and texture of the mineral filler significant influ significantly influence the performance of the hot mix asphalt. So as you can see in this picture, aggregates clearly separated from hot mix asphalt due to loss of addition between aggregates and bitumen, which is why we need mineral fillers. Now let's move on to the binder material, which is also the key of a good flexible pavement construction design. So a binder or binding agent is any material or substance that holds or draws other materials together which will form a cohesive whole mechanically, chemically, by addition or cohesion. So in a more narrow sense, binders are liquid or dough-like substances that will harden by chemical or physical process and it will bind fibres, filler powder and other particles added into it. For example, glue, adhesive and thickening. So in pavement construction, rigid pavement concrete uses cement as a binder and flexible pavement uses bitumen or tar binder. So binder materials are most important in pavement construction as they determine the effectiveness of aggregates in bearing loads as one structure. 
So do you know what the difference is between tar and bitumen? Go ahead, try and figure that out. So bitumen or asphalt. The term asphalt and bitumen are often used interchangeably to mean both natural and manufactured forms of substance. So asphalt and bitumen are the same thing. Bitumen has been widely used in road pavement since 1920s. It's a long time. Bitumen, which is from British English and asphalt, which is American English, is the carefully refined residue from the distillation process of selected crude oils. It is described as hydrocarbons of variable color, hardness, and volatility. Bitumen is also a mixture of organic liquids that are highly vicious, viscous, it is black, it is sticky, and it is entirely soluble in carbon disulfide. And it is composed primarily of highly condensed polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. The vicious nature of the bitumen binder allows asphalt concrete to sustain significant plastic deformation. Although fatigue from repeated loading over time, most bitumen surfaces are laid on a gravel base. So this is the distillation process of bitumen. As you can see, bitumen is the residue from a refinery uh, process of petroleum. Moving on to the function of bitumen in pavement construction. So the primary use, 85% of asphalt is in road construction. It is used as glue or binder. It will be mixed with aggregate and it will uh, create asphalt concrete. Bitumen is easy to produce. It is reusable, it is, it is uh, reusable, it is non-toxic and also it is a strong binder. So bitumen will be acting as a cushion for the surface materials and it will absorb the loading action from traffic. But, uh, bitumen also coats every grain of aggregate. It will seal the road surface against water and uh, it will provide a waterproof surface. And bitumen binds the surface particles together and it will prevent loss of material from surface by suction under the body of the moving vehicle. So if you properly select bituminous material, uh, it will be able to resist the action of weathering agencies. For example, the wind and the sun, and it will ensure a long life for the pavement. So why bitumen? So the reason behind the significant application of bitumen in flexible pavements are it is used in road construction because it is easy to, uh, to produce, it is reusable, it is non-toxic, and it is a strong binder. And then bitumen is also uh, having physical and rheological properties, which brings versatility. And it is uh, at the melting point of bitumen is low. Uh, bitumen can undergo recycling, can be used again and again. Bitumen can gain, uh, can gain adhesive nature. And bitumen has color variety, surprisingly. So try to explain all the reasons for using bitumen in road construction using your own words. Now let's look at types of bitumen. So first of all, we have the penetration grade bitumen, as you can see in this table. So it consists of uh, 20, 30, 40, 60, and 70, 100, and more, okay, depending on which standards we refer to. Next, we have oxidized bitumen grades. Okay, this is uh, used in industrial applications, such as roofing, coating for pipes, but sometimes also for paving roads. Next, we have the cut back bitumen. Okay, it has a temporarily reduced viscosity because um, it is mixed with a volatile oil. Okay, so this is a specification as you can see in this table. And then we have the bitumen emulsion. Okay, it forms a two phase system with two immiscible liquids, one of them dispersed as fine globules within the other liquid. So emulsifier having a long hydrocarbon chain, okay, um, it provides an ele electrochemical environment. So these emulsions are usually applied on road using sprays. And then we have the polymer, the modified bitumen, which is um, kind, kind of uh, common in developed countries. 
Okay, next we are going to discuss about steel. Uh, I mean, sorry, about reinforcement, which consists of steel and also fibers. So steel, which is also known as a reinforcing steel, is used as a tensioning device in reinforced concrete. So mainly it is used in rigid pavements. Steel reinforcements are also a component in the construction of rigid pavements, as I mentioned before, where concrete is the main material. So um, as we know, steels are formed from carbon steel and we also call it rebar. And these are the typical um, information that you learn from your concrete technology subject. So this is an example, the continuous reinforcements used in um, laying a rigid pavement. Okay, this example is taken from Federal Highway Administration, USA. And then we have uh, fiber reinforcements. Okay, as you can see, steel are usually used in uh, rigid pavement and fibers usually in flexible pavement. Okay, so it is generally used in cement concrete pavements, steel fibers and organic poly polymer fibers such as polypropylene and polyester. Okay, so fibers improve the specific material properties of the concrete, the impact resistance, the flexural strength, toughness, fatigue resistance, and also ductility. It is also distributed uniformly in a pavement mixture. Okay, so as you can see, this is an example of a pavement uh, containing fiber. So there are many companies that manufacture fibers for pavements as now um, as recently introduced. So you can find your own examples of fiber enforcement in the market. For example, this is Ace Fiber and uh, this is Forza Fiber. Okay, now we're going to go to the second part of our chapter, which is also um, the end part of this chapter, which is material testing. So for your level, the materials testing that we are going to uh, be discussing briefly is firstly for aggregates and secondly by bitumen. For aggregates, we are going to be learning about the aggregate impact value test, the polished stone value test the aggregate crushing value test, the flakiness index, and a location test, which is also known as shape test. Then we have the for bitumen, we have the penetration and softening test, the viscosity test, flash and fire point test, the ductility test, flotation test, and also soundness test. So you will obviously learn about the procedures and testing in the lab. So here we will just be discussing about the objective of the lab test. So let us look at aggregate impact value test or commonly known as AIV. It is um, conducted to determine aggregate resistance due to impact. So the aggregates are filled into the mold as shown in this uh, diagram. Okay, it will be hit by a rod for 25 times and it will be sieved through a 2.36 millimeter sieve. So this is called the aggregate impact value test. And next, we have uh, the polished stone value test, or also known as kit resistance. This test is only conducted on aggregates that are already being used as a wearing course. Okay, so the polishing value, it will show the resistance uh, from vehicle tires. Okay, so this is the equi equipment for skid resistant test. Okay, you can research yourself uh, a clearer image. Uh, for each of the testing equipments. So next we have the aggregate crushing value test, which is to determine the strength of aggregate due to resist, uh, sorry, resist crushing under applied compressive load. This is uh, a little bit familiar to impact, but it is resistance to crushing uh, as compared to impact is resistance uh, to impact. Next we have the uh, flakiness index test. Okay, which is to determine the percentage of flat aggregates in a sample. Okay, this is the equipment. And next we have the elongation test. Okay, this is to determine the percentage of long aggregates in a sample. This is the equipment used. And next we have the uh, penetration test to determine the stiffness of the bitumen or the material. So this is a standard penetrometer for bitumen. 
and next um, we have the softening test using the ring and ball equipment this is to determine the temperature at which phase changes occur in the bitumen sample this is for workability of the bitumen and then we have the viscosity test to determine the viscosity of the bitumen then we have the flash and fire point test okay this is uh, called the cleveland open cup method this is the equipment it is uh, conducted to uh, indicate at what temperature the bitumen can be heated without danger of flame in the presence of fire next we have the ductility test is uh, it is done to determine the ductility of distillation residue of the cutback bitumen blown type bitumen and other bituminous products and then we have the flotation test okay so now why don't you all answer try and answer all these questions first Define traffic in terms of engineering. Two, name and briefly describe five structures in transportation. Three, with the help of diagrams, try and explain the history of road construction from Roman roads to modern roads. Four, draw a flowchart of the history of law and acts related to transportation in Malaysia. And five, using a table, explain the highway and road categories in Malaysia. Six, Explain the roles of five government agencies in Malaysian transportation. 7. Identify the importance of the introduction of acts related to roads. And lastly, 8. Explain the relationship of the EQA 1974 to traffic and transportation in Malaysia. So that's all for Topic 1. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learn a lot from this video. So good luck. Bye-bye.